Hi everyone, it's Beach Baby Bob. I'm in my kitchen at home and it's about 33 degrees outside on a, sun, a sunny, hot summer afternoon. And what do you think people would do on such a warm, warm day? Well, they would turn on their oven and they'd make a cake. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I might not actually turn the oven on until maybe this evening when it's gonna go down to about 18 degrees uh, Celsius, but right now I'm getting things ready. Um, I'm going to make a chocolate cake because my wife couldn't eat chocolate for a long, long time, but now she can. So I'm going to go back to making chocolate cakes and see how that turns out. Um, I used to make a, a lot of chocolate cakes over the years, and I usually use my mother-in-law or my mother's chocolate cake recipe. But recently I've been looking in um, a very interesting cookbook that I found at the thrift store, um, and I'll show you the cookbook. It's called Cook's Magazine, All Time Best Recipes, Foolproof Favorite from 20 Years of Cook's Illustrated. So the magazine's called Cook's Illustrated. It's a, uh, an American a magazine company situated in Boston, and it's their 20th anniversary edition um, of their magazine and uh, it's all about the best recipes. So I thought I, I can't resist. I got to buy this book Especially when it was only a dollar at the local thrift store um, And I just want to read you this part here because this is the really interesting part. It says here that uh, uh, um, The uh, Cook's um, Illustrated magazine is situated um, in a 2500 square foot kitchen in Boston and they have not only a test kitchen there where they try out all kinds of recipes to see what makes them so special, but they have people from all over the world, approximately three dozen, who are um, uh, cooks and editors and food experts and scientists. And these people um, come and try to find out what makes the very best recipes, the ones that are the most successful, what makes them successful. And so I flipped through it and I found this uh, chocolate cake recipe back in the back here. And I don't know where it is now, but I, I've got, oh, here it is. It's called Old Fashioned Chocolate Layer Cake, which means it has two layers. It tells you how to make the cake, including the uh, frosting or the icing and it tells you why it's going to be perfect. And there are things in here I never would have guessed. So when I, I got the stuff out here on the counter, you know, the unsalted butter, the eggs at room temperature, the, the unsweetened chocolate, the sugar, cane sugar, vanilla, the buttermilk, the baking soda, the flour, the all-purpose unbleached white flour, and the salt. Anyway, I, I'm going to... Um, Put the cake together and I'll take you with me along the way and we'll see if it really is one of the best chocolate cakes ever. The first thing I did was I get two round cake pans and I um, greased them with butter and then I cut some parchment paper so that it would fit in the bottom of each one and then I put that in there and then I greased it again with some butter. So that's where the cakes are going to go in the end. Put a pot on the stove with a little bit of water in it and I brought it to a boil and then I turned it down to a, a slow simmer. It's boiling there but not very much. Just sort of, maybe I'll turn it up a little bit. I don't want it to be rapidly boiling, just a, slim, a simmer. And then I've got this pot, uh, this pot Pyrex bowl here. I'll put it on top and I'll take my um, my four ounces of chopped, coarsely chopped, um, unsweetened chocolate, and I'll put it into the bowl. And along with that, I'll put the, what does it say? Um, yeah, oh, the cocoa. So I've got a, a third of a cup of cocoa, organic co cocoa goes in there. And then I've got a half a cup of um, hot water. I just boiled some water here and it's, cooling down a little bit. I'll put a half a cup of that in it. So a half a cup of hot water. That goes in here too. 
and I'm going to stir it, stir it and um, get it mixed a little bit. I'm just trying to melt the chocolate and mix it with some sugar. So I've got to put a little bit of sugar in here. I think I'll turn up the water underneath a little bit so it's boiling again. So I just take a half a cup of sugar and mix that in there too. There. And then I stir it around while it steams and melts the chocolate. In this bowl here I have one and three quarter cups of unbleached all-purpose flour and then I added one and a half teaspoons of baking soda not baking powder and then I added a teaspoon maybe not quite of sea salt and I'm just going to mix it together here's my uh, mix master it's a brawn it has a nice uh, paddle in there not a paddle but a, a mixer thing and it's got different speeds and that's I'll show you how it works <laughs> And I'm going to use the bigger bowl, not the smaller bowl, the bigger bowl. I'm going to add uh, four um, large eggs, yolks and white, to that. They've been sitting around um, at room temperature for an hour here, so they're room temperature. I took them out of the fridge. And then I'm going to add two extra yolks to it and save the extra two egg whites in another separate bowl. So it'll be six egg yolks, yolks and four egg whites from large eggs in here. Take about 10 seconds to mix them up. And then to that, I'm going to add the remaining one and three quarter, or sorry, one and one quarter cups of the sugar. And I'm going to beat that up for about three minutes at the most. And then I'm going to stop. Four whole large eggs and two extra yolks. <laughs> Just about 10 seconds to mix that up and then I'm going to add the um, one and a quarter cups of white sugar that I have left and maybe take three minutes to mi mix it together. Now in the past when I made a cake, a chocolate cake, I would start off by mixing the butter with the sugar. And I would whip it up and then I would add the eggs. But this time I'm changing it. I'm whipping up the eggs first with the sugar. I'm trying to create large air holes in the egg mixture and that should make the cake much more moist and light. It's pretty light and fluffy, lots of air holes in the eggs and the sugar. So now I'm going to have uh, lots of fun with the chocolate. So the chocolate, if I touch it, it feels cool. So that's the way it should. So I take the chocolate, fold it in with the eggs, and that doesn't take long. So maybe, um, oh, I don't know, about a 30 to 45 seconds, I'll have the chocolate in with the eggs. And then I'm going to take my 12 uh, tablespoons, 12 squares of, uh, of unsalted butter. And I'm going to put one square in at a time into the mixture over here, in the brawn mixer. And I'm going to mix it for 10 seconds. Then I'm putting another square in, another do the, doing that 12 times. About 30 seconds. And now, squares of unsalted butter, each one a tablespoon, 10 seconds each. The last part is the fun part. It's the flour and the buttermilk with the vanilla. So I just took a tablespoon of vanilla and put it in with my cup of buttermilk. And there's the flour with the baking uh, soda and the salt. So what you do when you make a cake is you, uh, when you're adding the dry ingredients, you add, you start with the dry and you end with the dry. So I'm going to put a third of that 
flour in with the batter over here, the chocolate and the eggs, etc., and the sugar, and mix it up for about 15 seconds. And then I'm going to put in about the, some buttermilk, about a, uh, two, a half of that, and mix it up for about uh, 15 seconds, then some more flour, the rest of the buttermilk, and finish off with the flour in about 15 second intervals. My first batch of flour. And half of the buttermilk is in here, half of the buttermilk. Flour, buttermilk, flour. There it is. Ready to go in those pans over there. So I'll put half in one and half in the other in these two pans. I might not bake them until a little bit later because it's only um, supper time, five o'clock here, and it's too hot outside to turn the oven on. So I'll let the batter sit in the pans for a few hours and then I'll get back to you. There they are, two nine inch cake tins, greased with butter and parchment paper. The batter's in there. This one's a little tiny bit bigger than that one in terms of more batter than that one. That's good because this one I'll put on the bottom and this one I'll put on the top with some icing in between. And of course I'll frost the whole thing and it'll look like the one in the picture. And I'll talk to you later about the frosting and I'll talk to you later about how to bake this. So I have my KitchenAid induction stove uh, preheating. It's going up to 350. And then I, before I turned it on, I moved the rack, this one down here, into the middle. So instead of having the rack at the bottom, I've got it in the middle. I um, am going to bake it with uh, convection heat. I can use regular baking or convection baking heat. And the convection, as most of you know, heats all around. It's got an element at the top and at the bottom. So it cooks more evenly than a regular oven. And it cooks faster too, so I have to watch it. It says that once you put the cake in, you should wait about 25, 30 minutes. Maybe 20 minutes, I'll check it with a, a knife. And I put a knife in the center of the cake and pull it up and there should be maybe the odd moist crumb on the cake and that's it then it comes out if not it stays in there until that's what happens so 25 30 minutes at the most so I've got two of them here and they're going in the oven as soon as it heats up to 350 so the cakes are in the oven and it's at 350 and it's 8.05, so at about 8.30 I'll check them. Remember, it's a convection heat, so it might cook faster than that. I better watch it. And now it's time to do the frosting. So I've got my bowl here, my Pyrex bowl on top of my pot with some water boiling and just simmering. And I put in, now get this, eight squares of semi-sweet chocolate. Eight squares. And I put them in here and they're melting. Pretty much they've melted. It's hot though. Then I'm going to add eight squares or eight tablespoons of unsweetened butter. Add that to it. Mix it around in there. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of honey. And I've got some great honey here. Got from the farmer at the market. Apple Creek Farm Honey. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of the honey to the butter and the chocolate. And then it says I should use um, a little bit of salt, a little bit more vanilla for flavoring. Not too much. And I think um, I'll get that all together in there cooking for about five minutes. Then I'm going to add the cream and I'll let you know how that works. Just let's recap here. So I put this, the uh, eight squares of semi-sweet sweet chocolate in the bowl over top of the simmering boiling water. 
and stirred it and it melted and it didn't take long. And then I put in my eight squares or eight tablespoons of unsalted butter in there. Stirred it up, didn't take long, it melted in. And then I put in a little dash of vanilla and a couple of little um, pinches of salt. And then I used uh, two tablespoons of honey and a third of a cup of sugar, organic sugar, or sugar. Try to stay away from the white stuff, get the cane sugar. And I'm just gonna stir it up here for about five minutes. So after I stirred the chocolate up for about five minutes, I dumped it into this uh, uh, Mixmaster, Braun Mixmaster large bowl again which has been washed so it's in there and then I've got my whipping cream from the fridge I'm going to put in a, a good cup of that right in there yep maybe a little more than a cup so that's going in there and then I have over here at the sink I have the plug in the sink, the drain there, and I've got some cold water, not too much, but some cold water and some ice cubes. So the water's kind of cool. And I'm gonna place this um, mixing bowl here in the water. I'm gonna stir it until it starts to get thick a little bit. I don't know how long that's gonna take. Maybe five minutes, I don't know. But it, And as soon as it gets kind of thick, I'm gonna place this on top of the brown mix master and beat it at a high speed until it's really, really, thick and white and frothy and fluffy and yummy so this is going in the cold water bath first stir it up with the spatula then it's coming back here this is me stirring it in in the uh, sink in the cold water bath it's for about a minute now it's going to take about it's starting to thicken a little bit but it's going to take maybe about two minutes then it goes in Cakes are almost done. There's the frosting. There's the frosting. Sitting in the cold bath, just waiting to be put on the cake. The cake's almost done. As soon as I take the cake out of the oven, I put it over there on the table, let it cool, and then I frost it. I'll show you that part, but remember this frosting. It's got the chocolate, it's got the butter, and it's semi-sweet chocolate. It's got the unsalted butter, a little bit of salt, a little bit of vanilla. It's got some sugar and it's got some cream, whipping cream. Okay, there they are. Two cakes, the frosting. I'm just waiting for them to cool. And when they're cool, they'll shrink around the edges here and you'll flip them over onto your plate and they'll come out easily. So what I do is I flip the one over so it ends up with a flat top. They'll be cold. And then um, when they're cold, I'll put the uh, frosting on the top of that one. And then I'll flip the other cold one over on top of it and sort of push it together. And then I'll use the rest of the frosting to do the outside and the top of the last one. And then it'll look like it does in the book. And then we can put it in the fridge, um, uncovered, uh, for a day. Uh, we can take it out and um, wait till it's room temperature and then eat it. We could not frost it at all. We could wait till it's cold and just wrap each one of these two in um, some kind of uh, either parchment paper or saran wrap or something maybe even wax paper, wrap it up and then seal it in a really nice plastic bag, the cake, and put it in the freezer and we can leave it in the freezer for months and then bring it out, wait till it's room, room temperature and then frost it and then eat it. We could do it that way if we wanted to. So I'll show it to you after it's all frosted and iced up and ready to be devoured. So as I said at the beginning, uh, the cooks, uh, magazine company it's called cooks illustrated it is located in boston boston massachusetts in the usa it's a research um, recipe center 
their goal, their mission is to try to find the best recipes. And the best, I mean the best, they taste the best, there's nothing wrong with them in any way at all. And for this particular cake, what I learned, because I've made a lot of cakes, and of course I don't measure, and sometimes the cakes turn out okay, and sometimes they don't, but I don't think any of my cakes would be suited for Queen Elizabeth and the royal family in England. But maybe this one will, because the secret here, besides measuring, is to beat the eggs with the sugar first, and then add the butter and the flour mixture and the chocolate and all the rest of it later. Instead of beating the butter first with the sugar, you beat the eggs first. You want to create those uh, air pockets in the eggs. The butter also uh, needs to be um, room temperature, unsalted, and just the right amount because butter has a lot of water in it. All right, we'll see. We'll find out if it's suitable for Queen Elizabeth. I figured that the cake was cool enough to flip over, so I took the one that looked a little larger. There's the smaller of the two. And I placed it, um, a, the big platter, on top of it here, and then flipped the thing over. And it came uh, out of the pan perfectly because I remember at the beginning I greased it with butter and I used parchment paper and then I greased it again, the parchment paper with butter. So it came off perfectly, the cake's in perfect shape. It feels perfect. I know it's gonna be delicious, it's the right color. So I'll wait till this cools, that'll be still cooling. Then I'll put the frosting on top of that and finish and the it up. The vultures can fly in. And the vultures will circulate and in the meantime, I'm going for a walk because uh, every night I go for a walk around my neighborhood. Not a speed walk, but at a pretty good clip. And um, I start the day off with lots of exercise at the gym. And then I, um, I swim and I use weights and I go to a cycle spinning class and yoga, all that in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I kind of relax, but I do my gardening. I'm always out and about. I'm never sitting around doing nothing or sitting still for very long, moving in every direction possible. And then in the evening, I do things like this. And I water when it's hot out about this time of day because I don't want the water to evaporate and I want the plants to have a good drink without being um, getting their roots burned when they come up for a drink. Anyway, then I go in the evening, I go for a walk up and down the hills. Also, I can eat a piece of chocolate cake. And if you look at my body, I'm very thin. No big pot, even though I'm over 70. Here it is, folks, the finished product. The old-fashioned chocolate cake. That's what it's called inside the cook's. Magazine it's called Cooks Illustrated, not Sports Illustrated, Cooks Illustrated. It's the 20th anniversary special edition. Foolproof favorites from 20 years of Cooks Illustrated. Well, my mother was pretty good at making chocolate cake. I remember every Sunday we had a roast of beef and a chocolate cake. And my father was a big, huge, six-foot-tall muscle construction worker. And he ate his food, and then he took the, the, his big thumb, and he shoved it right down into the cake and said, that's my piece. And the cakes were dark and delicious. So we'll soon find out. We'll let you know. Yum. And it's around lunchtime, and I thought, I can't wait any longer. I took this out of the fridge a few minutes ago. It's supposed to be room temperature, but I can't handle it. I'm going to cut myself a piece. So it's... Like it's kind of cold. You can feel it. Maybe I should get another thin knife. 
And then, so it's supposed to be room temperature, but anyway, so put this knife in there and work it out a little bit. I wish I wasn't so impatient. Move the cake out of the way. And it's probably cold, but let's see. The taste test. Yum. That for sure is a 10. Look at the consistency. Same all the way through. A little cold. But wonderful. So, I hope you try it. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Hit the bell so that you'll find out when I post a new video and make a comment. You can say, you did a great job, you did a crummy job, whatever you want to say. Over and out until next recipe.